Hi everyone, I'm Robina. And I'm Layla. Welcome back to our channel, Nutrition Unpacked, where we try diets so you don't have to. So this is our final video in our intermittent fasting series. We talked all about what intermittent fasting is, the physiological changes that happen with fasting, impact of fasting on cognition and weight loss and longevity. We have different videos for each of those topics, so definitely check those out if you've ever been curious about what the heck is the research on intermittent fasting. But today, we're specifically talking to you people that want to do intermittent fasting. For whatever reason, whether you want to lose weight, whether you feel like it'll make you healthier, smarter, work better, feel better, whether you think it's just going to work better for your lifestyle, you just want to try it for fun like we did. We're here for you. Yeah. We're going to tell you how to do it right. The reason that we want you to do it right is because it is shockingly easy to do this wrong. There's certainly a lot of, I mean, I don't know, I don't know if I want to be dramatic and use the word risks, but like genuinely though. There, there definitely are risks. There are definitely risks to doing airman fasting, just like there is when you take on any sort of diet that involves some sort of restriction. One thing that's top of my mind is the risk of nutritional inadequacy or deficiency. The less eating opportunities you have or like the more you're shortening your opportunity to eat, that just means that there's less eating events to get in those nutrients that you need. Even if weight loss is your goal and you're trying to reduce your calorie intake, your body still needs all sorts of different micronutrients and everything to be able to function. All of these nutrients exist, they're called nutrients because your body actually needs them to do certain functions and carry out certain processes. You know, when we're talking about nutrient deficiency or nutrient inadequacy, you know, that might seem like pretty severe, but we already see in the general population, there are certain nutrients of concern like vitamin D, calcium, fiber, potassium, and that's with people eating over, you know, a normal eating window. So if you are doing intermittent fasting, like Rabina said, you're shortening that down even more. So that kind of does raise a few alarm bells for me. I'm like, oh my God, are you gonna get everything in? What can you do if you still wanna do intermittent fasting? And this is just like, ugh, I feel like not sexy advice, but trying your best when you are in your eating window to prioritize those nutrient dense foods, you already know what they are, Try to get in those vegetables, fruits, whole grains, nuts, lean sources of proteins. And that's the best way to make sure that even if you are kind of cutting down your eating window and kind of reducing your calories, that you're still getting those other nutrients that your body needs. If you are doing intermittent fasting or you're thinking about doing intermittent fasting and you're concerned like, oh, maybe I'm not getting some of these important nutrients, definitely go see a dietitian. Um, you know, some dietitians are very against intermittent fasting, which, you know, we got to empower our patients to do what works for them. But, you know, a lot of really great dietitians out there will enable you to do intermittent fasting with the knowledge and the skills and the goals to be able to make sure that you're getting your nutrients in properly and you're doing it as healthily as possible. Another concern with intermittent fasting and kind of just going long periods without eating and possibly compromising the amount of protein that you're taking in is loss of muscle tissue. And we talked about this in our weight loss video, which is that one of the claims around intermittent fasting is that it's helpful in actually preserving muscle mass with weight loss. The research does not support this, and if anything, fasting seems to have no effect on body composition or muscle mass, or it actually has a detrimental effect compared to continuous calorie restriction. So I don't know where that thought came from, but the evidence really doesn't seem to support that. However, if you are still interested in doing intermittent fasting, doing some sort of resistance training or strength training exercise would be beneficial and just trying to minimize how much of that weight loss is coming from your muscle tissue. And that being said, like if you are an old or an adult or someone who's really concerned about their muscle mass, maybe they have sarcopenia, which is basically when your muscles start shrinking, you know, intermittent fasting in that case may not be the best strategy for you. And in that case, it may be helpful to see what other options are out there to meet those same goals that you're hoping to achieve through intermittent fasting because you know exercise is really important for stimulating muscle growth but the other thing that's health stimulating muscle growth is eating especially eating protein so when you're kind of not doing that for a long period of time your muscles are like okay i guess we'll just <laughs> Up. <laughs> Another really important consideration with both intermittent fasting and any diet as a whole is really the risk for disordered eating or developing an unhealthy relationship with food. This could look like binging during your eating window, maybe being inflexible, maybe a really high level of food preoccupation that actually causes stress or distress or maybe is compromising other areas of your life. When I was going through some of the social media content that's out there around intermittent fasting, there were a few pieces of content that I came about and I was like, you know, I don't know this person. I can't 
like it's not for me to diagnose them with anything but just the way that they were talking about mm -hmm. intermittent fasting the way they were talking about food i was like that's kind of mm, or there's other people and other creators that are making content that definitely would be very triggering to someone who had a history of eating disorders or a history of disordered eating or just a general unhealthy relationship with food so like the internet space is like kind of mm -hmm. iffy with intermittent fasting and i there are definitely people who are out there doing intermittent fasting i'm like are you doing this to potentially be like covering up mm -hmm. an existing eating disorder or, or disordered eating whenever you're doing any kind of dieting and you're thinking about food so much like, okay what am i eating da, 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 it can cause kind of unhealthy thought patterns to start arising one way to maybe avoid some disordered eating behaviors is you know setting some realistic and sustainable goals for yourself on intermittent fasting like i'd say don't jump into it being like i'm gonna do a 24 fast and really thinking about how can you fit intermittent fasting into your lifestyle as it already is where it's not going to be a preoccupation and getting in the way of your day-to-day -day life the transition to maybe disordered eating or an unhealthy relationship with food i think can be slow and subtle like it may start off as what feels like relatively harmless but then you might find yourself in certain situations kind of getting stressed out about social events or just kind of thinking about food a lot more in a way that's maybe actually causing stress in a way that perhaps it didn't before or if it seems like you're in a situation where you're gonna have to extend your eating window if that's kind of starting to cause stress i think sometimes it might not start off that way but if you're finding yourself sliding into that territory it could be worth either walking away from this type of approach altogether or maybe even connecting with a healthcare professional that might be able to kind of support you if you do have a history of an eating disorder or a history of disordered eating this might be a diet to to skip out on you hear about a lot of like crazy different benefits that are out there from intermittent fasting but especially for those groups of population there is i feel like quite a big risk of that triggering some of those really, really unhealthy behaviors. And I would say if you still decide to venture into intermittent fasting, despite having that kind of history, I would really, really, really recommend you know, seeing a dietitian, seeing a mental health practitioner, and also seeing a physician to kind of oversee this. Another arguably maybe obvious consideration is just the risk of being hungry more often, or maybe even having low energy levels, especially if this deviates from like your usual pattern. To help combat that, maybe be flexible with what your eating window or your intermittent fasting protocol actually looks like 11 to 7 or 12 to 8 is like a very common one where like especially people that are doing like 16 8 like a 16 hour fast eight hour eating windows like those are the ones that i hear about the most but if you're someone that wakes up with a raging appetite then maybe kind of shifting that back and having more like a morning to afternoon protocol might make more sense for you humans are very social eaters like every single event happens around food. This diet, along with many other diets, can actually kind of get in the way of like your social life and functioning with, you know, how you normally would with your friends and family. Part of this and kind of touching back on the disordered side of things, if you are finding that you're choosing to maybe forego social events, kind of especially on a consistent basis because of the eating window that you've established yourself, I mean, that could be a sign of disordered eating or an unhealthy relationship with food. Again, being flexible with your eating window, maybe there are days where you allow yourself a long your eating window or maybe you adjust your eating window to allow yourself to still fully participate in those events or maybe even communicating with the people in your life to see if maybe instead of meeting for dinner maybe meeting for brunch might be make more sense maybe talk to your fam, friends and family and let them know kind of what they're doing and maybe they'll help facilitate it for you and like you know move move the meeting around change the activity instead of going out for dinner maybe you'll go out dancing or something like that another really important thing i think across the board and it kind of ties into the nutrition side of things as well is planning ahead and being aware of like how your day is going to roll out like depending on when your eating window is having things like snacks on hand or having a plan for like bringing a lunch with you whatever it might be just to make sure that you are maximizing that eating window so you can get as much nutrition in as possible finally and this kind of goes for any lifestyle change at all even beyond the diet or eating space give yourself grace be patient with yourself it's okay and not every day is perfect be okay with being flexible because this is not something that perfection is required like even if we find out that intermittent fasting is like the ultimate elixir of youth and longevity i can guarantee you that once in a while having a slightly longer eating window is not going to immediately negate everything and kind of make you die tomorrow absolutely i think people definitely have like all or nothing mindset with a lot of these things so yeah compassion flexibility is very very important that being said as we covered throughout 
this series like a lot of the claims about intermittent fasting are kind of overhyped so you know don't think that this is the diet that you have to do to be healthy like do it because you want to do it or you think it works well with your lifestyle don't do it because like some instagram or youtube or whoever people told you to that being said there are a few groups of people and we've kind of touched on this throughout that i'm like Maybe like we just don't even think about it. No intermittent fasting. Elderly and older adults, because it's so important for them to keep their muscles strong and their bones strong as they're going through that period of their lives, intermittent fasting may be detrimental to that. Also, people who are undergoing periods of growth. So children, I definitely oh. no, no. And don't don't kids don't do this. If you have kids, make sure that they're not doing this. They're, I know they're all exposed to like social media and stuff nowadays, but get kids, absolutely not. And also if you're pregnant, you know, your nutrient needs are already higher, definitely wouldn't recommend this. And then again, yeah, people who have histories of eating disorders or disordered eating, definitely a very risky thing. So those are the populations where I'm like, hmm, we shouldn't, no, no. You know, if you're just like kind of curious about it or you think it's gonna be beneficial for you and you're not one of those groups of people, there are ways to make it as healthy as possible. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you never miss a video and follow us on Instagram and TikTok. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.